Thank you all so much for being here. I'm just going to introduce Steve Bagnini, and he's going to introduce Timothy in just a moment. Steve is a Monterey elected official. He uh, is the main organizer of the Weston uh, celebration and brought Guitars Not Guns to our community. Uh, Guitars Not Guns is a nonprofit that helps keep, keep guns off the streets and music in the hands of kids. Um, he has been in office for about 14 years, but he's been serving the community for the past 30 years or so. So, give it up for Stephen Vagnini. Thank you. Thank you very much. More importantly, I, I moved to Monterey in 1976, and I've lived here ever since. I consider myself to be uh, a proud resident of the city of Monterey. Um, and I'm also very proud and honored to be here today to introduce Timothy Barrett to you. Um, and I've known Timothy for quite a while. And, uh, you know, I, I have his bio here, and I could read it, and I could talk about the, the Neighborhood Housing Fund, which is, he is establishing right now, and I'm going to be part of that. Talk about the community response to Elder Care Symposium that he's put on. Uh, slow Monterey money to bring community investment toward environmentally sustainable businesses. Uh, I could go on and on about things like that that Timothy has been involved with. But you can read his bio, you can read his uh, information before you, but, but what I want to do is talk from the heart, really, because uh, I've been, uh, as uh, I was introduced, a member, I've been working for the County of Monterey for 31 years. And I've been very involved in, in, in the community in a lot of different aspects. And during that time, you get to know the people that are committed and, and are really working to make a change in this community. And Timothy is one of those people. He is a person who likes to get things done. When I say likes to get things done, he's doing it not for himself, but he's doing it for the community. He believes in, in finding a solution to the problem of homelessness in Monterey, in Monterey County. He believes in trying to find a solution for uh, helping senior citizens, for finding and finding a way to create more affordable housing in this community. And through doing that, we need to create jobs. Tim not only wants to do something, but he understands what the problems are all about. I believe that the city of Monterey is at a crossroads right now with this coming election. We have quite a few people that are interested in running for the office. And some of them, good intentions, are not prepared, in my opinion. So I think it's very important for everybody to spread the word about Timothy Barrett, his qualifications, what he's done, and why we need to continue to have him in office. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you, and once again, it's really a proud privilege to be here and to do so. The next, uh, the current vice chair, current council member, and I hope uh, the next council member for a long time to come, Mr. Timothy Barrett. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That was a very wonderful introduction, and I'll try to live up to it with every breath I take. Um, it is really amazing, and it means so much to me to have all of you out here, um, because as a city, we need to show up and we need to pull together to make things happen. This is a civic um, involvement barbecue, and so we have ways for you to be involved. Uh, Where's Scott Hansen? Scott Hansen, could you raise your hand? Scott in the back over there, he's with the Laguna Grande neighborhood. If you want to know more about the Laguna Grande neighborhood, go talk to Scott. And uh, he'll tell you what they do and maybe get you signed up. Uh, we have Susan Sotts. Where's Susan? Right there. She's with Slow Money Monterey. And Slow Money Monterey is finding ways to bring local investors with local entrepreneurs so we can have more working people and better paying jobs in our city. Where is uh, Sadie? Sadie with the Community Responses to Elder Care Symposium. The Elder Care Symposium is going to be taking place in September. And it really, the, the tagline to the Community Responses to Elder Care Symposium is engagement, education, and empowerment of citizen problem solvers 
to meet the needs of the elders in our community. And really, I think that's what it is all about, showing up to help each other, to uh, improve our quality of life, and keep each other together as neighbors. So if you're interested in those things, please go find those people and talk to them. Uh, I, I would like to point out Clyde Roberson, who's in the crowd. Hello, Clyde. Thank you for being here with your, your puppy. Gracie, we hear a lot about Gracie at every council meeting. So it's great for her to make actually a public appearance. I like to, the way I like to operate is to show up and put myself in as many places out into the community as I can and to listen, to become educated about what people need, about what's happening in the community, and then to consider the consequences of every decision in light of the effect that it has on the people in our, our neighborhoods and our, our communities. I recently received a letter from a constituent and he says, um, he says that gentrification has reached astronomical proportions in our community. It's become a global phenomenon. Housing is no longer about finding a place to live. Real estate is no longer about providing housing. It's all about the money. We need to change that. We need to make housing about places for people to live and communities to be established and neighbors to get to know each other. So how do we do that? Okay, well, we need to incentivize more affordable, workforce affordable housing. And we wanna do it right. When we develop affordable housing, we want to make sure that it doesn't negatively impact somebody else's property. So we need to actually take the time to figure out how to do it because I, when we build our housing, I want it to serve our community at an affordable rate for years to come. I want to do it right when we start out. And one of the ways we can do that, I think, is to involve private industry more. We need to find ways to incentivize developers to be a part of the solution, right? And so how can we make it easier for developers actually to build the workforce affordable housing that we need? I think that should be part of the program. I don't think that we can allow a plant figure that market forces alone are going to provide our affordable housing. We need inclusionary housing ordinances to make sure that it happens. But we also need to make sure that it's affordable to build. And so I think we need to work together as a community, both those of us who are renters and those of us who are developers to figure out ways to make that happen. And I think we can do it. Another issue that's important to our community is livable wage paying, paying jobs. So those are nice words at election time, but the thing is we need to figure out how to do it. And that's what I've been working on since taking office. The two issues that prompted me to run are workforce affordable housing and people having the incomes with which they can actually afford the housing, making the housing affordable. So last year we had a, a, a conference here, an economic conference about community capital. And community capital values existing workforce. Community capital values sustainable economies in a sustainable, econo environmentally friendly city. Sustainable um, community capital values the culture of a community. And this is something that's apart from traditional investment but because we brought that conference, the Monterey County Chamber of Commerce has embraced community capital as one of the ways they want to move forward with economic development. Community capital and slow money are going to be part of the countywide business expo. And the Monterey Bay Economic Partnership has embraced community capital approaches into tri-county area-wide economic development and impact investing. And this is essentially a tidal shift, a shift away from strictly for-profit motivation and investment to economic development as community development. Another issue that we have in our community in particular is that we have an increasing uh, 
burgeoning community that's over the age of 65, which is very good, but at the same time, we have a diminishing community that's under the age of 21. And so there's a gap, a gap in the fabric of our community that I think is something we need to think about in terms of how we support our elders as they begin to need our care. And what I've noticed when I've walked from door to door on the election campaign is that people, their families, are huddled together in their homes trying to meet the needs of their family members in terms of caregiving. And as the caregiving needs increase and the family members rise to the um, rewards and the challenges of caring for their loved ones, they become further and further withdrawn from community at the time when they need it the most. So how can we change that? Well, hopefully some of the answers will come out of the uh, Community Responses to Elder Care Symposium in September, and we can have some community solutions about networking uh, in our community to care for one another as the need for care arises. So those are some of the issues that are very important to me. Looking back, to when I first ran for office. I had never planned to be a city council member. It wasn't in my, you know, long-term plan. But I had started to notice the need in the community around me. I started to notice that more and more families were being sort of pushed out of the neighborhood. As I would walk from the store back to my house, there is a elderly couple that has a very nice home and we got to know each other and they confided in me that they would not be able to stay in their home if it weren't for the proximity of the food banks because they needed that augmentation to their diet in order to afford to be in their home. And then they asked me not to tell any of their neighbors that because they wouldn't understand. And that's because their neighbors were not from this area and mostly had second homes. And so that's a concern. How do we maintain housing for the people who live here. Just neighboring my house, a neighbor went into bankruptcy, his home was foreclosed on, and two families had to move out and they didn't know where they were going to go. These are issues we need to look at in terms of how we consider our policies, how we look at our housing situation, and there are problems we have to solve, and I think we can do it if we work together as a community. Thank you for being here. Uh, I hope you'll take the time to sign the, the list over there. Let us know you were here. Uh, pick up some literature, and I'll be around to discuss issues with you uh, throughout the day. We have hamburgers and hot dogs and veggie burgers. Let's have a good time while we do this. Thank you, everybody.